Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. Well, today we want to talk about Pop! OS versus Elementary. Before we dive on into there, I do want to highlight a new support option. For those that have asked about it, Subscribestar is online. So we are Subscribestar.com slash Switch to Linux. So if you wanted to support in a way other than Patreon, which I am on Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash t-o-m-m this one is subscribestar.com slash switched to linux and i do have thinklifemedia.com as well for support also so you can head on over there if you want to help support the channel if you missed out on notifications go ahead and follow along on any of the social platforms we have twitter minds gab mastodon we are at switch to linux so with that let's go ahead and have a look at our operating systems we are going to look at pop os so pop os is a custom ubuntu gnome build for system 76 computers but you can also take it and install it on anything pop os installation is radically different than you're going to find for most of the other ubuntus they pretty much want to do an opt out of a disk encryption so by default pop os is going to encrypt your disk that is also set up as an oem install which is becoming a popular option in some other installers as well and elementary may or may not have this i, I forgot to check but pop os only has the oem install so you go ahead and install it you reboot it and that's when you put in your account information downsides about both of these is they both are opt out of location services you do have the option on first boot to turn them on or turn them off but the default is on so if you're just clicking fast through there they are collecting some location information now they're not really collecting it and storing it themselves like google is collecting and storing your location data basically what that means is that apps that you have allowed access to your location data can access your location data that's something to keep in mind now, Pop! OS is better in that they have specific builds for, for NVIDIA and non-NVIDIA, and so that is a really nice option. Otherwise, Pop! OS looks mostly like vanilla GNOME. There is a lot of tinkering under the hood that actually makes Pop! OS run a lot better than, than other systems. So if you are looking for an Ubuntu-based version and you love the GNOME desktop, you can go ahead and go with Pop! OS. You will probably have a very good experience. They also have have on their documentation installs um, just install instructions for if you want to use pop os with other desktop environments as well so you are not limited to just the ones you have elementary os takes a little bit different approach they're like we want to be mac and there is nothing we want you to do that we don't want you to do and elementary I recognize that there are a lot of good elements about it, but this has always been on my, I don't really recommend it list. There's a lot of little issues and reasons why. Obviously, they are going stylistically like Mac, but what that actually ends up meaning, when the cat gets out of my desk, what that ends up actually meaning is that they have a lot of curated built-in apps that have their own look, feel, and style, but if you install anything else, you have multiple different UI designs all over. Whereas Pop! OS based on GNOME is actually going to look fairly consistent throughout, unless of course you download a Qt based application. Now elementary OS on the positive side is trying to work with the developers. They want to kind of get into this model. It's like, yes, it is free, but they are also encouraging you to help support the developers. And I really like that model. I'm not sure it's going to be a long-term sustainable model. I mean, Ubuntu tried this and failed. Um, so elementary, who knows, they may, they may not. The other big downside that uh, I remember about this is if it's not one of their curated apps, it gives you a warning notification. This may be dangerous for popular applications like GIMP and LibreOffice, which makes zero sense. Unless they've since fixed that but I really don't think they have we will go ahead and test that so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at each one of these guys and then just kind of give you a brief walkthrough of the desktop and some of the the options and the features that they have we'll look at installing software we've already mentioned the installs pop os is 
uh, an OEM installer. Very easy, very simple, and very fast to install. Elementary just uses the basic Ubuntu installer, and so using the basic Ubuntu installer, it actually works out very well. So as far as ease and usability out of the out of the gate, both of these are going to be very good options. You're not really going to go wrong. They're not hard to use. Really where your difference is, is do you want customizability? Do you want different desktop environments? Do you want other options in your system? Elementary actually makes that a little bit hard. Pop West is like, hey, here's some documentation about how to do that. And so that is really, really the, the thing to, uh, to consider is in this model here. Do you want a simple system that works the way they want it to work, which there's a ton of valid reasons to do that, or do you want something you can play with and tinker with? So first we'll go ahead and have a look at Pop OS. Here is our loading screen. Go ahead and click in on this, and we can enter our super secret password that is definitely not one, two, three. Go ahead and get yourself logged in, and then we will land on a GNOME desktop. Now these ones were both just downloaded uh, just recently. Now the latest versions here of Pop OS, you actually have a little notification up here. This is actually an ability to uh, turn on tiled windows and gives you shortcuts. So if you're wanting to experiment or play around with a uh, tiled window manager, you can go ahead and toggle this guy on and it's going to give you pretty much that experience. So pulling in one item, it's going to do this. Let's load up a second item. It's going to tile you out like this. Pulling up a third item, then it's going to tile you up. I picked one that's a little bit slower to load. There you go. So you can see it tiles up. It's very nice. So if you are looking for that option, you can actually turn that guy off, and then everything will kind of go back to normal next time you start pulling stuff open. So it is the basic GNOME desktop. We do not have a excessive amount of software installed. We have LibreOffice, basic system tools, and some common GNOME tools that we have. Um, here's Geary, Firefox, basic contacts, calendars, and stuff from GNOME. And the one thing that we do have is we have the Pop Shop, which is definitely an infinitely better choice for installing applications than the elementary store, although the elementary store is also pretty stinking good. So both of these have their own custom stores. Here on Pop the Pop Shop, you can go ahead and just click in on your uh, on your uh, system here. You can see we have a couple different Audacities. I believe that's because we should have flat pack set up. So this one's from the Ubuntu Deb repository. And if we were to go back and look at the other one there, Oop, let's get back there. Let's look at the second one down. You can see that this one is the flat pack. So we do have the flat packs and the, um, and the repositories built right in out of the box here. Now, um, what I don't see right out of the gate here is I can't tell which one's which right off the bat. So I'm going to have to click in on those and see each one. And that's maybe a downside that um, you can see here, every application, there's multiple versions because the repositories and the flat packs. So it'd be nice if it could get, tell us which repository we had out of each one of these guys. Um, and other than that though, the, the pop shop though is pretty nice. Here's our basic settings. So flat pack settings, you could actually remove the flat hub connection and then it wouldn't show you the flat pack. So if you're not really interested in using those, you can certainly do that. You can see here that we have, um, we have the pop version of Ubuntu. So they're modifying a few things and then there's some proprietary. So if you want to use, um, some proprietary focal main, you can go ahead and enable that. It's going to enable more hardware and things like that, but then it's going to get rid of some of the open sourciness uh, of Linux. So that is an option that you have inside of it. So as far as how everything is working here, let's go ahead and have a look. It is seeming a little bit uh, a little bit laggy for me. I'm guessing that might just be because we're on Wayland on a virtual machine, which Wayland on a virtual machine is always a little bit laggy. You're probably not going to find that on your main system. Uh, if you install this on real hardware. Now their settings configuration is slightly adjusted a little bit. You can see down at the very bottom, we have an OS upgrade. That's something that 
that they have actually added. We also have a firmware option here. This is also something that they have added to the settings. So it's not pure vanilla GNOME. It's very close to it, but there are some changes and some alterations that actually makes managing the system a whole lot better. As I said, under the hood, they've done a lot of things. Uh, one thing that uh, Pop can do is a lot better uh, disablement of the Intel management engine, which is a little bit controversial. But those are things that we don't really see. We are not really, uh, it's not really obvious to you until you, you dive into it. But overall on real hardware, Pop! OS is going to give you a really good experience. So let's go ahead and jump on in and have a look at elementary OS next. All right, so here we are on the elementary login screen, and uh, they are, as the versions come out, they are becoming, uh, you know, looking better and better and better. Let's enter my super secret password that is definitely not one, two, three. Whew, good thing I have that number lock on. Or wait, wait, maybe it's not a good thing. I don't know. Either way, so here we land on the desktop, and it is very much like GNOME. Uh, we do have a panel, though, in this case. We have an applications menu, so this is kind of the default. We can switch to a more list item if you prefer a list item over here as well. And the here we have system settings. So one of the great things about this one here is we actually have parental controls. Now it's called screen time and limits, and you can actually set your own screen times as well. You used to only be able to do that on a sub-user account, but you can set certain applications. I did find in testing this it didn't work as well as I thought it should work, but uh, it, is, uh, it is something that they have built in, which is good. If you're utilizing tools that are built in for elementary, they are going to have a very nice concise overall look, albeit except I think a couple of them, I, I know video and I think music, nope, just video, is dark themed uh, by default, but everything else is light themed, looks very, uh, very nice, uh, very unified throughout. Like I said, the downside is when you start installing other applications, it becomes a little bit um, not quite as, uh, we'll say not quite as uh, as consistent. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Let's look through here. So here we only have one Audacity. And it doesn't tell us anything about where it's at. It does tell us it's free. So if we click on this, this is the warning I was telling you about. Okay, Audacity is a very well-known application that gives us this non-curated app warning. It's not curated by the team. It may not receive bug fixes or feature updates. It may access or change the system or personal files without permission. Show non-curated warnings. Of course, you can toggle this and not see these again. But to me, this is a very disingenuous thing to show up on very well-known, very popular, very trusted, and very reputable applications. And Audacity is one such application because that's going to scare a new user away from installing things. And that's why I'm not a fan of what they're doing here uh, as far as that. They pretty much want you to use only the curated stuff, but they really don't even give us a list of what's curated necessarily. We have this big repository where you're told everything is safe and you get warnings that says this may not be safe. It produces a little bit of cognitive dissonance or, hey, since I just read 1984 again, double think. All right. So... Why not, you know? But regardless, we do actually have a good system as long as you're using it. So if you're looking for a system that's going to do your basic computer things, you're going to listen to music, watch videos, check emails, get on a web browser, things like that, then you're actually going to have a very good experience on it. Now, one of the downsides that this is going to have is if you have like a dev package, it doesn't install dev packages out of the box. You have to change system settings for that. There's a, a few other options that we have as far as accessing core files. You can grab information about how you can actually make those work. But out of the box, Elementary OS is a very locked down version of Ubuntu. Now, this provides a couple factors. Number one is unless you know what you're doing in system tinkering, it's going to be infinitely safer. So you can give this to your 
a family member that knows nothing about computers, and I promise they won't be able to break it as long as they're obeying warnings. But at the same time, for those of us that like to use our computer systems, then it can get a little bit on the annoying side. So that is something to keep in mind. So that is elementary OS. Both based on Ubuntu, both of these are easy to use. Both of these have good, valid points and purposes. All right, so finally having a look at uh, both of these guys, which one do I recommend the most? Well, it's really going to depend on your situation. If you're more of a, a regular U Linux user wanting to experience more of Linux and wanting to tinker, wanting to play, wanting to experiment with desktop environments, you're definitely want to go with Pop! OS because it is basically follows the philosophy of the Linux systems. There's documentation for other desktop environments. It's done some nice tweaking under the hood, and overall it works out really great on real hardware. Now, elementary is a good choice if you are new to Linux and you're just kind of getting your feet wet. You don't want to accidentally break your system. Elementary is going to be better out of the box. And so with that in mind, really if you're if you're looking to tinker, pop. If you're not looking to tinker, just kind of get a taste for Linux, definitely go with elementary. Now uh, I did not touch as much on flat packs or snaps or anything. Neither of these distributions have snaps installed by default, but you should be able to just easily install them with the um, uh, either in, in the software manager or uh, sudo apt install snap D. As far as flat pack support, Pop! OS does have Flatpak support enabled with Flathub out of the box. Elementary OS has Flatpak support available, but it does not have any repositories configured. So you would have to manually go in and configure the repositories. Once you do that, they may or may not show up in the elementary store. I honestly couldn't tell you. My inclining is that they're going to because the Pop! OS store is actually a fork of the elementary OS store. So I'm guessing that that's the t where the functionality came from, but I could be wrong about that. So there's my overall take. Neither one is absolutely the clear winner. They're going to depend on your use case scenarios, but both of them are actually good distributions worth having a look at. So let me know your thoughts on these distributions in the comments down below. Once again, have a look at the ways to help support the channel. Uh, check out our new Subscribestar page, subscribestar.com slash switched to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.